Back in the classroom, Miss Fraser acted as if nothing strange had happened. She started feeding the clock lizard, and she put us to work right away. We had to make a chart showing how water gets to the homes and buildings in our city. When Aunt Nora drew a picture of a kid inside a raindrop, Miss Fraser said, "Where do you get these crazy ideas, Aunt Nora?" Here is how a water chart turned out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven. Paper stick to the board. One, water evaporates from lakes, rivers, and ocean. Clouds of water vapor from in sky. Rain falls to earth. Sun falls into streams. Sun streams run into cities, reservoir. In mixing basin, dirt and mud stick to the alum clumps. In setting basin, clumps of alum and dirt sink to bottom. Sand and gravel filter takes out large impurities. In pipe to storage tank, fluoride is added for strong teeth. Chlorine is added to kill every last dizzy germ. Pour water is held in a storage tank. Water means Carry water in under city streets to our homes and buildings. Later that day, we saw a bus in the school parking lot. How did that get there? Did we only imagine going through the water supply system? Will we ever find out what really happened? The last time I saw that bus, it was in a cloud. I think. Miss Fraser says we'll be studying volcano next. This makes us all feel a little nervous. After all, we're teacher like Miss Fraser. Anything can happen. There aren't any volcanoes round here and there. Notes from the author for serious student only. The following notes are for serious students who do not like any kidding around when it comes to sandbags. If you read this page, you won't be able to tell which facts in this book are true, and which were put in by the authors as jokes. This will also help you decide when to laugh while reading this book. On page eight, the green mold that grows on old bread is actually made of tiny one-celled plants. It cannot talk or make any sound, whatever. On page nine, plants do not have hands, nor do they wear sunglasses, and the soil does not contain burgers, fries, or shakes. On page thirteen, going through a dark tunnel will not cause you to wear a scuba diving outfit. On pages fourteen, fifteen, the force of gravity keeps a school bus firmly on the ground. It cannot rise to the air and enter a cloud, no matter how much you want to miss school that day. On pages sixteen to thirty-one, children cannot shrink or enter raindrops, fall into streams, or pass through the water purification system. And boys and girls cannot come out of the faucets in the girls' bathroom. Anyone knows boys are not allowed in there. On pages thirty-four, thirty-five, your town or city may not get its water from a mountain reservoir, and purification process may be slightly different from the one in this book. Many towns get water from river lakes or wells. Do you know where your water comes from and how is it, and how it is purified? On page thirty-six. Once a bus is left behind a clown, it cannot suddenly appear in the school parking lot all by itself. Obviously, someone has to go back to the clown and drive it home. Maybe that's the lizard.